What's going on, smart people? Today I'm not actually going to my internship at Jefferson Lab today. I'm just going to work from home a little bit. And that's because my mom later is throwing a little uh, graduation party for me. So so figured I'd work from home a little bit. More specifically, I'm going to be going over the semi-inclusive deep inelastic scattering hydronic tensor. And that looks like this. And it's useful because I need those in order to do structure function decompositions on them. And structure functions are... Let me get back to you on that. I know they have something to do with whenever you have like some charged particle that doesn't have a uniform charge distribution, hence the structure function, uh, but that's pretty much the limit of my understanding of this so far. So, so maybe I should stop talking about the thing that I don't really understand. In other news, part of my project, as I've said before, is to translate a Mathematica notebook into Python. And I blurred out a lot of the, the code, but uh, this is essentially the Mathematica notebook that I'm translating, and I'm making progress on it. I've, I've gotten the first couple blocks of code translated. What I really like about this internship so far is that it's like the perfect balance between on paper deriving things and doing exercises on paper, and also a bit of coding. So if I get tired of, you know, going through the algebra of some derivation, then I can switch over to the code and start just, you know, going through uh, that translation thing that I've been doing. Now, this video is a little short so far, and I don't have too much to report on with the internship, so I figured what I would do is actually show you the process of taking a dot product of a four vector. Since it's pretty short, it's pretty straightforward to the point, so I wouldn't want to make an entire video on it, but I think it's kind of cool to see how it all plays out. So let's do that. These four vectors in physics typically have uh, one component of time and three components of space. We're, so we're just going to define our four vector V and the first component, we're just going to label V0. That's going to correspond to our time component. Uh, and then the next, we're just going to keep it as Vx, Vy, and Vz. These are not exponents. These are just indices. And we want to find out what does it mean for V to be dotted into each other uh, or into itself. Now, with a normal vector, what you could do is you could just multiply the same component and add them together. Um, but that's not the case for a four vector. For a four vector, you have to incorporate what's called the metric tensor. And um, we're going to use what's called the plus, minus, minus, minus. Actually, no. Scratch that. Let's go ahead and use the minus, plus, plus, plus metric signature. And what that means is you, have, you can define some metric G, which is going to be pretty much just a diagonal matrix. Or not pretty much. It is a diagonal matrix. First component is going to be minus 1, 0, 0, 0. So it's going to be a 4 by 4. 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1, 0. And 0, 0, 0, 1. So we've got a diagonal matrix. Minus, plus, plus, plus. In fields like particle physics, the metric signature actually just goes by plus, minus, minus, minus. But we're going to simplify this whole dot product thing in a little bit uh, to where it'll mean more if we use this metric signature. Okay. So in order to do this dot product, what we need to do is we need to sandwich this metric in between uh, this four vector. So we're going to do V. I'm going to label it as V sub mu, telling us that we're using a row vector. This is the convention. G sandwiched in and then superscript mu corresponding to a column vector. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase this metric here and write out what this means. So this means v mu is just going to be the same thing but a row vector. So let's call it v0, vx, vy, vz. And let me write this up here. So we want to find V mu G V mu. Okay, and then sandwiched in between is going to be the metric. Minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Uh, for the record, this is what's called the Minkowski metric, and it is the metric associated with a flat space-time. Okay. And I think that'll become more apparent if we get rid of the time component and see what happens when we do that. Uh, but we'll get to that. 
we'll see how this reduces to, say, a 2 vector. Okay, and then now we just have a column vector of the same thing, v0, vx, vy, vz. Oops. And from here we're just going to do matrix multiplication. So we're just going to take the inner matrix times the right-hand matrix, and we're just going to rewrite this part here. So this is just going to be v0, vx, vy, vz. And then here, if we do just normal conventional rules of matrix multiplication, it's across and down. So minus 1 v0 plus 0 vx plus 0 vy plus 0 vz, that's just going to give us a minus v0. So here, we have a minus v0. Same thing, we're going to go down a row, that's going to be across and then down. 0 v0 plus 1 vx plus 0 vy plus 0 vz is just going to give us vx. Same thing, we're going to go down a row, that's just going to give us a factor of vy and vz. So now we've reduced this product of three matrices to a product of two matrices and now we can just do the exact same thing but just with one row and one column. And that's going to give us minus v0 squared uh, plus vx squared plus vy squared plus vz squared. Cool. Now one thing that I can do here is if we take a look at this answer here, this is our time component squared and this is our spatial component squared. So if we make a substitution, if we choose a specific type of four vector such that this is CT and then this is X, this is Y, and this is Z, well, what we get is that this is equal to minus CT squared plus, uh, let's call that, let's just call that delta X squared, where delta X is just going to correspond to all of these squareds. So what we get here is that this can be easily used to describe the space-time interval. And here, just to be clear, what I'm saying is that delta x squared is equal to vx squared plus... Just to be clear that I'm not just looking at x. And that's really all there is to it, to four-vector multiplication. If you're not using Cartesian coordinates, all that changes is the metric that you use, but the rest is pretty much the same. Now we're going to make it take a simplification. We're going to look at a simple case here where we're going to look at a regular vector in two dimensions. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this vector uh, C. Actually, let's, let's pause for a second and take a look at this metric one more time. This is zero, this is zero. This part corresponds to the time part. We're going to look at a vector now that doesn't correspond to time. Well, the metric just loses one dimension. Okay, so we lose this dimension of the metric. And if we want to look at, so this is going to be our x, y, and z. And let's say that we also don't care about z. Let's look at, let's just get rid of this part as well. So we're going to have a two-dimensional metric that only depends on x and y. Okay? So really what this is going to be, if we're just having a two-dimensional metric, is it's just going to be the identity matrix. Right? Because this is just... Let me just write out the metric as a whole again. So we're getting rid of the time component, we're getting rid of the z component, which gives us just this little part in between. That's our new metric. Okay, so we're going from four dimensions to two dimensions. And what I want to do now is I want to define a new vector that I'm going to call c. And this is just going to have two components to it. It's going to have some vector or some component a. Let's make it a lowercase a. Why not? and we're going to have some component B. 
And we're just going to go through the same thing. We're going to find out what the dot product of this vector is with itself. So c squared is going to be c mu g c mu, which is going to equal a b, I guess there doesn't need to be a comma there because it's a matrix, times the identity matrix. And this is a little redundant, really, because the identity matrix is essentially the matrix equivalent of multiplying by 1. And then we have our column vector here, A, B. When we multiply this together, what we get is that this is equal to A, B, column vector, A, B, right? Because this is just A plus 0B is this element here. 0A plus B is just going to be B here. We get this is equal to a squared plus b squared. So in a very uh, sort of pedantic kind of way, what we just showed is that uh, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So it's the four vector way. Well, I guess it's still a two vector, but it's the vector way of coming up with the Pythagorean theorem. I hope you guys enjoyed this little ad hoc break into a math video because I didn't have much to talk about today. Let me know in the comment section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.